God bless you, saints. This is Sean here from uh, Faith Brings Change. I'm just going to share some more insight with you about the stuff that, you know, I've been sharing for a little while. Um, like I said, in October, the Lord is leading me to go and uh, he's giving me prophecies every day. He's visited me in dreams. He's give, shown me, he's shown me some visions from the Bible that's, I can't really share those until I uh, do the prophecies because that's part of it, you know, and I don't want to give anything away. But this, the beginning of this high, great outpouring of God, God said this was a beginning, but he gave me more insight. This is called the great shaking. Uh, there's, there's different stages to this uh, great outpouring of God, and there's, there's steps, and as we progress further, it's going to go to different things. It's going to be a great explosion and different things. and but, but it starts with the great shaking. And this is a great shaking. Yeshua can't pour out his spirit and build. He cannot build a house. You cannot build a house on a, a, if it's a foundation built of man. That foundation built of man that isn't of God, it has to be torn down. And so God is going to do the shake. And remember, guys, when he said in the Bible, God says, I promise not only to shake earth, but also heaven. You know, and everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Well, there have been a lot of shakings before now uh, in the past and everything, but this is the final shaking that he was talking about that I'm going to be starting in October that he told me to do it. And it might seem uh, like the, a lot of times we hear of things so much about what God's going to do, and when it gets here, we just, you know, we don't believe it or anything. But, but it's not going to... Uh, it's going to come with power. It's not like how we used to, you would have a man on a video making a video or whatever, or, or a man on a pulpit saying something, and it just passes. God's told me, I will never longer delay my words anymore, for I would have poured out my spirit, you know, in my whole house in those days. And so this is the great shaking. And he's leading me. He said, it's kicking off on October 6th. He told me, he's the one who gave me the date in the dream when I asked about the coronavirus. He gave me two dates. He said, October 6th, October 27th. I sat on that dream. I didn't know what that meant. And when, you know, doing all these prayers and everything, then he came back and he told me. So Yeshua's done this before many times. He's come to me in a dream and he'll give me, a, tell me something. And he'll tell me the second part of it later. And so this great shaking that's going to happen is going to shake everything. <coughs> <clears throat> it's going to shake all those leaders. You know, it's, it talks about when God, you know, the six seal is broken, all the, uh, and the, of course that's on the final day of the Lord, but uh, the six seal is broken. And, you know, all the kings of the earth run and hide themselves for fear of the Lord and for the great day of his wrath has come, they say, and who shall build a stand? Well, God is starting to do the shaking and the people that are built their house on sand, the leaders are going to be scared and they're going to be running they're going to be fighting, and, and this is prophesied. And I'm going to post a link, guys, in the description box below. Uh, check out that link of Percy Collette. <coughs> Sorry, I've been doing a lot of speaking, as I've said to you before, guys. But check it out, because Percy Collette was a missionary, a powerful missionary. Smith Wigglesworth uh, moved in signs and wonders before, you know. He preached Holy Ghost repentance and stuff and hard repentance and everything. And God poured out his spirit on him. And uh, he uh, laid hands on Percy Calais and asked him all night, you know, asked God to make him a powerful missionary. And, and that's what happened. And he went into the Amazon jungles with the Indians and, and he would, could have had his life on the line. And he was even poisoned and, and he didn't die. And he was just seeing tremendous wonders. But God took him to heaven for five and a half days like he had prayed for years and years and years and years. And he was consecrated in holiness. One of the things Yeshua told him in heaven is about the great explosion, the great shaking, and the great uh, outpouring of God. He said, sin will be conquered on the earth. And, you know, he said that, he thought that was really something. Jesus said, sin will be conquered on the earth. And, and his remnant, his remnant, which is not very many people, it's not even hardly, it's not what you think, guys. And so we got to contend to be that remnant. Uh, it's going to be conquered on the earth. And, and, and Yeshua conquered it, me, he's conquered sin. He's conquered it, and I, um, and it's marvelous. And how did it happen? Like I said, I, I prayed the psalm a day. I, I memorized the psalm a day, and I kept praying it every day and uh, memorizing the next day another psalm. And so I, I, can, I can literally quote 30 psalms with the Bible closed and praying them every day. 
And, and another prophet, Bob Jones, when he took him to heaven, Yeshua said, uh, I, actually, I, I want to say when Bob Jones, he got to see the Lord face to face. The Lord came in his room and he said, and Yeshua said to him, dear friend, dear friend. And he said, I've been, I've been waiting for this day a long time. And he said, get your questions ready. What do you, what do you want to ask me? And he said, I haven't gotten any, Lord. And then the Lord began to talk and prophesy to him and tell him different things that were going to happen. And, um, after that, um, trying to see if I can remember. Oh yeah, he told him, "I want you to have, I want you to pray some prayers, so I can answer them." And he, he's kind of shocked about that. And he said, "What prayers, Lord?" He says, "Psalm twelve, you know, help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fell from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Who have said, or I should say." The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is the Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sign of the needy. Now will I rise, saith the Lord, and be lifted up. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. And the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever and ever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. And see, so I've, I've memorized that, and I have a lot of psalms memorized, but that's Psalm 12, and I've been praying that every day. He told them to pray that because he wanted to do big and mighty things on the earth, part of the outpouring. And see, so I'm, I'm being marveled because God has given me these things, and I'm going back and I'm watching those videos, and God is saying, look, I would do this if they do this, or I'll do that. And, and when they, some, this man prays this or does that, I'm moving. And I've been praying Psalm 12 every day along with all the other ones. And, and, and all these men talked about the outpouring of God and what Yeshua has told me. And after I've, the, what he's told me, I'm finding these videos and it's confirming what, what is being said. That God is going to do a great shaking. All those idols are going to be toppled. Sin is going to be conquered. God is no longer going to put up with the same kind of lukewarm stuff in the church. He's going to literally shake it and get it ready and, and pour out a great uh, mighty axe explosion and and the people will fight against the signs and wonders the leaders will fight against it to their own shame they'll fight against it it'll be poured out on out of the way places day and night that's what it says and remember what i've been telling you guys to get into a wilderness out of the way places it's away from facebook away from youtube it's praying to god it's just praying those psalms every day uh memorizing them and everything and, and the psalms are spirit when you're praying day and night uh, that river of life, when people's prayers ascend to God, it fills up more and more and it hits the earth with the explosion. So Yeshua told me what I've been doing. I've been praying mightily. He led me to do that and to kick off that uh, outpouring of God because those prayers filled up. That prayers that I was praying every day like that, 30 prayers every every day of Psalms, you know, 30 Psalms every day just continuously nonstop, and they were keeping me in holiness. That river of life was filling up and it hit the earth and it's and it's here now. But it is, uh, and it's going to be manifested starting in October, things you're going to see. But it's already being manifested to me, you know, behind clo closed doors, out of the way places. And I want you to get this, guys, because it's so awesome. I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm seeing scenes of the Bible and dreams and Yeshua's talking to me and, and all kinds of things. Things that other prophets, I'm getting their perspective, like I'm standing in their shoes, seeing things that prophets have seen. And it's awesome. It's way beyond anything I could have ever imagined or dreamed. It's so awesome. I, I know I look serious sometimes, but I'm so full of joy. It's just my the part of my, uh, everybody's different. I've had a great spiritual warfare background, and I've had a seriousness because I've dealt with demons before and, and a lot of that stuff. And so, I mean, I'm really ready to stomp on the devil. I, I'm tired of seeing what he's done to the church and, and my family and my body, uh, uh, of believers i'm tired i'm tired of seeing what he's done to my brothers and sisters in the lord i will not stand for it anymore i will not allow them to destroy themselves the ones that are uh, in sin i'm going to go after them i'm going to seek them out i'm going to seek out the, the that one sheep that is lost i'm even if he he hates me and he's going to fight me I'm going to reach into that sh shark tank with all the sharks wanting to bite me to uh draw out that you know that lost sheep out and and let the chips fall where they may and everything and and God God is ready to do this and he he's on the move now. He it's already been loose the the leaders of this world they cannot stop it. 
the the heathen in the church they cannot stop what God is what God is doing what He's already opened up to me, and what He's released. And Yeshua was the one worthy to open the seals, but He shares His uh, victories. He says, "The person He who overcomes, He who overcomes what sin? He overcomes." I give power over the nations also, and he shall break them with a rod of iron, dash them like a pe dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel, even as I've received in my father. So Yeshua shares his victory with others. And the Bible says we judge angels. And he says, At that time I will search Jerusalem with candles, and I will punish them who are complacent, who say God will do nothing good or bad. And 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 God is now visiting because the Bible says that judgment first begins at the house of God, and so it's starting here. And the leaders wanted to, uh, in the church, they wanted to wait, cast fire on the people out there, but they weren't ready for the fire themselves. I mean, and so it, it's coming in here uh, to get us ready because God God wants a people without spot or blemish. And, and the gold... Uh, the gold must go through the fire, and so now it is time for for the gold to come forth. It's time for the dross to be removed. That gold, which is his people, and that dross, which is sin, needs to be separated. And God is now going to send that fire and that great shaking, and there'll be great shakings. There'll be great mighty things. There are going to be a lot of earthquakes next year. There are going to be a lot of things that I'm I'm going to be release. I'm going to be releasing, and and others are going to be releasing, as the Spirit leads, as they position themselves. And if you guys will position yourselves and start praying those psalms every day, guys, you're going to make it even bigger, and it's going to be even. Uh, God's going to do it. He has me, and He can do so much through me right now. But he wants to share it with all of you guys, and so it's worth it to be holy. And Satan wants to give you sin. So because if he gives you sin, he will take away your authority and, and your beloved. So you won't be doing these shakings. So many people will be lost as a result. And so you need to get your authority back, guys. Your authority is in the word of God. Yeshua said, you can do nothing good apart from me. And a lot of people want to do all these, say, I cast out demons and they're not living in holiness. Well, Yeshua may be uh, casting out demons through them, but it's for the sake of those people that need deliverance and not for those people that are casting out demons. And on the last day, Yeshua said, there'd be many that would say, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he was, he, or I should say, he will say, they'll say, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out demons in thy name and heal the sick? And do many wonderful works, and then he will profess unto them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. So, uh, you know, so God wants us to be totally separate from sin, totally, totally have nothing to do with that. And and Satan wants us to take to give our authority away, but we we can do nothing uh, good apart from Yeshua. So how we get our authority to step up, step on the devil is our relationship with the Word of God, Yeshua, and, and and we learn we grow in our relationship through Yeshua through His written Word first, primarily. And, and like I said, I'm praying the Psalms by day, and 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 God is pouring out His Spirit on me, the revelation of that by by night. And everything, and um, I'm reading those and getting into those, and those are spirit, and they're full of so much life, and so much peace in them, and so much uh, understanding. And God wants you guys to have a rich, full depth understanding of of His Word and prophecy and prayer and praise and what it means for your life. And I also want to talk about guys, um, the mark of the beast, because uh. Because as you know, there's a I think it's a woman or it might be a man on here, and I I liked this comment before, whoever it is, brother or sister, uh, that you said, uh, start your name starts with C, it starts with an M, men something, and about how uh, the mark is sin, and I do agree with that. The mark in itself, that spiritual mark, in itself is sin. That's what it represents. That's a full manifestation of it. But we know on earth there are also types and shadows of things, and uh. This mark that comes, guys, this mark of the beast that comes in the flesh that you people literally get microchipped, that is a, a, a physical manifestation, a type and shadow of the spiritual mark that people take, which is sin. When they, when they go to, they can't buy or sell unless they take that mark, and so they agree uh, to go off into sin, and then they're marked in their heads by the mark of the beast, and they have to repent, and only Yeshua can erase it. And people may say, well, why is it that when you take a physical mark, you can't get forgiven, but you can get forgiven of the spiritual mark? And I'll, I'll tell you why Yeshua told me. Because when you take it in your physical body, you have uh, pronounced, I am living in the flesh. You've pronounced your allegiance to the flesh only. You know, 
and and you've that sealed the deal in your flesh. You said I'm I'm going to stay this way, and you're taking that mark. You're a pledging allegiance to Satan to live in your flesh, and you've rejected the Spirit of God, and and you don't want to no more live in the Spirit, and so there's no forgiveness after that. You know, and that mark is uh Kim Peter saw it looks like a sun symbol then. Mbaki, uh, Macedonian star in New Mexico, and it has a handprint on it. Uh, Kim Peters, you can listen to. I saw the tribulation. He describes all this stuff, but nothing is comparing to where we are right now, guys. With what God is about to do, you haven't seen anything yet. You're gonna see a glorious church. It's gonna take a lot of fire, and God is gonna really. He's turning up the heat starting next year and starting in October. These things I'm gonna be speaking. So get ready for the heat to be turned way up, guys, because we're going through this fire. Yeshua is not rapturing us out yet. He's turning up the heat to get his gold out of the house of the devil to get that dross burned out, so we can get ready to meet him when he does come. And I love you guys, and I'm praying for you so much. Uh, you can send me your prayer request on truthforbearer1414 at yahoo.com. Uh, like and subscribe share this video uh it, it will really help get this message across definitely uh people need to know let them know that the great outpouring of god is here and it starts with this great shaking of god which is starting in october and so uh i love you guys um i'm praying for you uh, always um and just Stay in holiness, guys, and, and keep your eyes on Yeshua always. And, and never look back. Never turn to the left or the right. Just It's a straight shot for you toward heaven, guys. I love you. Till next time. Shalom.